Hi, this is Dr. Eric Berg, and in this short video, I'm going to talk about calcium myths, misconceptions, and interesting facts. This is part of my new CD of the Month um, program, and I'm just going to give you a little taste of what's in there. We're going to talk about calcium. The, the information I'm going to share with you right now is going to shock you. So first thing I want to tell you is what makes bone? Does calcium make bone? Actually, it does not make bone. Bone is made from water, minerals like calcium compounds, never individual calcium. In other words, most calcium that people consume is um, calcium carbonate. That would be limestone. You'd be better off chewing the rocks outside because when you consume rock, which is in most supplements, calcium carbonate, which you want to avoid, um, you're not going to build bone. It's not going to go into the body. It's not going to build bone. It's going to probably plug up your kidneys or go right through you. Okay, so um, you want to consume calcium from plants, leafy greens. Now, cal bone is also made from collagen, protein. Um, if you want to destroy your bone, just go ahead and consume cooked collagen, which is in cooked meat. I'm not against meat but I am against over um, eating all this cooked meat because that basically cooked animal protein will deteriorate your bones. So the next question people always ask me is, well, I'm protecting my bones because I'm drinking all this milk. Does milk build bones? No, it doesn't build bones. It rots bones. In other words, if you take a calf, a baby calf, and feed it pasteurized milk, it'll die within 60 days. So what you want to do is you want to consume fermented milk products, unless you have an allergy. That would be the uh, plain, organic, raw um, yogurt, or um, raw milk cheese, or kefir, things that have bacteria. So when the, even if it's pasteurized, if you take pasteurized milk and make cheese out of it, or yogurt, you're still, you're making that... Um, product more, making the calcium more available because the new enzymes and the bacteria in it will help you absorb calcium. So even if we took this calcium carbonate, it converts it to an available calcium. Now the other thing is when you take raw milk, which by the way does build bone, but you can't find it, um, what happens is that if you spill it in your carpet, it will not smell because there's enzymes, there's bacteria in there, acidophilus. But if you take pasteurized milk and spill it, it will rot. So again, if you think you're getting um, this great product when you're buying milk and building your bones, don't hold your breath. And it's also very mucus producing. The next thing we're going to cover is uh, vitamin D. Now, some of you are already taking vitamin D. If you're taking vitamin D, make sure it's natural. That'd be vitamin D3. But you can get uh, vitamin D from the sun. 20 minutes of sun a day will give you plenty of vitamin D unless your adrenals are all messed up because the adrenal gland, if overactive, will block vitamin D in the body, which is interesting. Now, what does vitamin D do? Vitamin D, um, if you have a deficiency, will cause pain in your bones, specifically in the back. So back pain many times can be a vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D is necessary for the absorption of calcium into the bone and into the blood, but not into some other tissues. Vitamin F is the opposing reciprocal vitamin to vitamin D. They work in teeter-totter. So if you have a lot of vitamin D, it automatically depletes vitamin F, which we're going to get to in a second. So let's just take a look at what really happens here. Calcium is mobilized and transported through vitamins. The vitamin D takes the calcium from the skin and the muscles and the tissue and drives it into the blood and the bone. Vitamin F, on the other hand, takes the calcium from the bone and the blood and pushes it into the tissue. Okay, so that's what you need to know. Now, what is this thing called vitamin F? I never heard about it before. Did it? People are, have a confusion, like, where, where does this come from? Well, as you know, the first vitamin ever discovered was vitamin A, and then the second one, vitamin B, third is vitamin C, and then D, and then E, and then F. And you even have vitamin G and H. And it goes all up to K. So here's vitamin F. Vitamin F allows calcium to be transported in the tissues. So really, one of the big purposes of vitamin F is a calcium transporter. All right? 
Calcium, on the other hand, is a, one of the most important purposes of calcium is to protect you against viruses. That's right. So when you get a herpes uh, simplex, uh, simplex virus or a canker sore, um, that means you have a, a calcium deficiency. But it could mean you have a vitamin F deficiency that can't transport the calcium into the tissue. Now, uh, many people um, get viruses coming out of remission when they're stressed. Why? Because the adrenals deplete calcium from the urine. Okay, so adrenal stress will deplete calcium from the urine and the viruses come out of remission. So vitamin F is an immune protector. Viruses stay in remission if there's enough vitamin F and calcium. And this includes all viruses, mono, the flu, etc., etc. Don't worry. This is going to get worse. The papillomavirus. Now, now, I don't know if you know what this is, but a lot of women have the HPV virus that, that's linked to cervical um, cancer, cancer of the cervix. What's very interesting about the papillomavirus is that these case outbreaks generally occur in late summer. Hmm, interesting. Why does that happen? Late summer. Well, what happens during the summer months? You get all the sun. What does the sun do? It depletes vitamin F. Interesting. And then the virus comes out of remission. Polio. Dr. Sabin. Check this out. This is what he says. Why does para, uh, paralytic polio, with only rare exceptions, remain practically dormant during mo more than two-thirds of each year, appear only in occasional persons, and then seem to explode during the late summer and early autumn. Now, why could this be? Now you say that virus, this virus, polio virus is contagious and it's all these kids in school, they're coughing. But the polio outbreak occurred in the summer months when kids are outside playing with their shirts off, getting all the sun, eating a lot of ice cream. And by the way, sugar depletes certain nutrients that can, especially calcium. Interesting, eh? So what happens, you need a balance of calcium and vitamin F and vitamin D. I'm not saying vitamin D is bad. I'm not saying vitamin F is bad. I'm not saying that if you took this, this would cure your cancer. That's my disclaimer. My point is I want to educate you that both of these vitamins work in sync and viruses come out of remission when you're deficient in certain nutrients. Now, for the full, complete understanding of calcium and vitamin F and vitamin D, um, if you want more information about the CD of the month or on sources of vitamin F, you can call my office at 703-354-7336. And um, Umi, or Muna, can actually explain and tell you a little bit about this new program that I come out, came out with, which will allow you to receive uh, a CD of the month every month on different health topics. I want to thank you. Um, hope you enjoy this tip and I'll see you real soon.